Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. You know, during the holidays, we're all thinking about what are we gonna make for our celebrations, the family get-togethers, but did you ever think about those leftovers and what in the world am I gonna do with all this stuff that's in the refrigerator? Well, today, hopefully, I'll give you some great ideas to use the leftover turkey, some of the vegetables that were left over on the meal, and then those mashed potatoes, we're gonna do a croquette out of those that is absolutely delicious. So let's get started with the soup. The soup recipe is actually called Bitsy's Spankin' Vegetable Soup. And Bitsy is my older sister, and her daughter, Bradley, her youngest of her three daughters, Bradley, she named the soup Bitsy's Spankin' because growing up, it was absolutely the favorite thing during the winter time in their home. So I thought I would introduce you to Bitsy and Bradley, who live in Tampa and actually get together quite a bit to prepare this soup. So let me introduce you to them. Hi Vera. Hey Vera. Bradley and I are thrilled that you're sharing our family's soup recipe with your viewers tonight. Yep, this was definitely one of my favorites growing up and now I wait for the weather to get a little colder so I can make it for Randy and the boys. Thanks again for choosing our family's recipe. Hope you all enjoy the soup as much as we do. Bye! Bye. Thanks, Bitsy and Bradley, and I hope that I do a good job with this recipe today. So earlier, I got my beef shanks in my Dutch oven, got them good and salted, and I covered them with beef broth and have let that come to a boil. Now all the goodness is gonna go in. I've got chopped up carrots, celery, onions, and we've got some great seasonings basil, thyme, black pepper, Worcestershire sauce, and fresh parsley. Now, one of the things I think I love about this soup the most is how brilliant the color is, the really deep burgundy. So I've got crushed tomatoes, and Bitsy was actually really good at anything Italian, so I know that some of that influenced this soup. We've got chopped tomatoes, tomato paste. So, you know, if you've been canning over the summer, you can utilize all that good tomato stuff that you canned during the summer months. And then tomato sauce. And we're gonna just let that come to a boil and simmer for several hours. So I'm gonna move that over because I went ahead and got some prepared earlier. So I've got the last little bit of the beef shank. And you know, part of the reason this is so awesome is that marrow in that bone in the beef shank is what's kind of thickens the soup and makes that really great. So all we're gonna do now is add in this cut up stew beef, really is basically what it is, it's like chuck roast. So I'm gonna add that to this and you see that brilliant color I was talking about, it's just, just screams homemade all over it. I'm gonna add in just a little bit of Montreal seasoning. That's kind of my twist to it. That's not a Bitsy's recipe. I've got some barley. And then this is when all those vegetables that are either left over from your meal that you had or your freezer is getting out of hand with things that you froze over the summer while they were in season, you can start adding those in. So I've got butter beans and peas, all kinds of frozen vegetables that I just had in my freezer and then corn on the cob off the husk. Today in Vera's Corner, I'm gonna show you how to do that and make it really easy. So come back with me after the break and we're gonna get started on two fantastic turkey sandwiches. Welcome back everybody. If you're just joining me, I'm doing leftovers. We're making a whole show on how to create fantastic leftovers from what you're going to be preparing over the holidays. 
The vegetable soup is going bitsy spanking. That's my older sister and what her youngest daughter calls her vegetable soup. It's just the whole house is going to smell fantastic when you make this recipe. And as always, our recipes are at our website at verivera.com. All right, so we're going to get started on two turkey sandwiches. And the first thing that we're doing is a great brunch idea. Maybe the, the Saturday after the holiday that you want to do, having everybody over just for a late morning brunch. This is a fantastic idea. So I'm going to put a little bit of butter on my griddle, get that kind of going over here. And then just a traditional custard for French toast or three eggs. I've got a cup of milk. And I love to do this in the pan that I'm going to actually prepare it in because it's less to clean up. Cinnamon, and I'm just going to mix that together. And this griddle really comes in handy when you're doing this sort of thing because you can make quite a number of these at one time. So this is not going to be a single piece of French toast. This is going to be a sandwich cooked like French toast. All right, so let's get this bread going here. And I'm going to do two pieces. So you want to get it started. And now we're going to flip it over. And if that griddle is just right, and it looks like it is, and I can come over and immediately sit it down. And if you've got it hot enough, you shouldn't create much of a puddle there, which is called a foot. But if it does go out, just push it back in with your spatula. So while that's cooking, I may turn this down just a little bit. I'm going to get started on the second sandwich. And it is just a traditional turkey sandwich. So I've gone ahead and put mayonnaise on the bread. And here's that leftover turkey that we all love. In fact, I think my favorite thing about any holiday where turkey is being served is the turkey sandwich. And we all love it with just mayonnaise and salt and pepper and lettuce. But if you've picked up that turkey breast from the fresh market that is absolutely fresh, delicious, and wonderful, um, you're going to want to make plenty of sandwiches out of this. All right, so I've put the turkey on. Now I'm going to put just a little bit of kosher salt and pepper. We've got some Havarti cheese. I'm going to put there. Let me check my toast. Ooh, it's just right. Flip that over. All right. And then remember the episode that I did on canning? Savor the seasons. And we did the fig preserves. Now, hasn't this come in handy? Because we can put the fig preserves right on top of this turkey and Havarti cheese sandwich. Nice and chunky. And you know, you could zap this real quick if you wanted it to be served warm. But that one's all ready to go. So I'm going to put the lid on him, move him forward, and now let's get started putting this French toast together. All right, so I've got one piece there. I'll turn him off. And then, don't you love this way to present bacon in a jar, a mason jar, or something like that? So we're going to do a little bit of turkey. And the bacon, just, you know, when you're looking for ways to present having something standing straight up instead of laying flat. So we've got just a little bit of this applewood smoked bacon. I'm going to put a little arugula on this one. And it's just such a pretty sandwich too. And then how about a little bit of cranberry since we did fig on the other one. Kind of matches the season. We'll put the top on this one. And when we come back from the break, don't you dare throw those mashed potatoes away because I'm going to teach you how to do a mashed potato croquette that is the bomb. So come back with me in just a few minutes. Vera's Corner is brought to you by Georgia Bank and Trust and Southern Bank and Trust. 
Today I'm going to show you a quick and easy tip on how to cook corn and then how to cut it off the cob with no mess at all. Start by microwaving your corn in the husk for four minutes. Cut off the end of the cob and be sure you're using hot hands or a pot holder. Then shake the cob out of the cut in silk free. Place an inverted bowl inside a larger bowl. Place the corn vertically on the small bowl and begin cutting the corn from the cob, starting at the top, rotating and continue. Use your knife to scrape all the sweet corn juices. This is absolutely perfect when you're doing cream corn. The kernels will fall into the bowl and you'll be left with a perfectly clean counter. Welcome back everybody and those sandwiches just look fantastic. I've got the French toast ones in the warming drawer. Um, they're going to be nice and warm and just, just delicious. And then the other sandwiches that were just made with the turkey and the Havarti cheese, um, I've actually put a moist paper towel over those and then covered them up so they'll be, the bread will be nice and fresh. So now we're on to the potato croquettes. And I'm so excited about this recipe because, you know, I love to do anything that you can bring the young people in with you. So I'm challenging everybody to make this recipe. Even if you have this much mashed potatoes left over this coming holiday season, I want you to try this. So I've got a little bit of mashed potatoes left. I'm going to add to that some flour, chopped chives, an egg yolk, and some Parmesan cheese. So, you know, your seasonings for this can be your preference, but again, it will also depend on what seasonings were in the potatoes when they were prepared the first time. So you don't want to over salt or, you know, too, put too many things in. A lot of times people put a lot of extra things in their mashed potatoes. So keep that in mind when you go to this recipe that you want to season appropriately. All right, so once you've gotten that all mixed up, this is where you're going to start making just little balls with it. And I went ahead and got some of these done in advance. So you're going to make those about the size of a walnut. So just a nice size. And then you're going to put them back in the refrigerator to get good and stone cold when you're doing this. So, you know, you're thinking, Vera, what in the world? What's this whole idea with potato croquettes? Well, everybody knows me to be a very strong supporter of small business. So my little gas station where I go, um, every week to fill up with gas, Smith Chevron in Augusta. Um, there's a gentleman that seems to always be filling up gas when I'm there. His name is Robert Thompson. And every single time he says, Vera, when are you going to make croquettes on the show? So Robert, I'm making them today and I hope that you're watching and I can't wait to hear what you think about them. All right, so now we've got the balls done and when you're doing a fry situation, you want to do wet, dry, and then fry. So I'm looking at the situation over here and you're thinking, what happened to Vera's cooktop? Well, Vera's cooktop is now a wolf cooktop induction that you actually can put a towel, paper towels or any kind of a tea towel, and the induction goes through the towel and keeps you from splattering your entire counter. That's why a lot of us don't fry because of the cleanup afterwards. So this way I'm protecting my surface as I'm frying. So wet, dry, and see the kids would love to be involved in this part. So this is just, you know, this could be a fantastic appetizer. I mean, everybody loves potatoes and everybody loves something fried. So when you're looking for different things to do, you know, think about this recipe. And as always, they're always on our website at verivera.com. But I love to think of ways, you know, in the catering business all those years, you almost run out of ideas for menus when you're planning the menus. So when I'm thinking about a brunch, a lot of what I've done today would be perfect on my next brunch menu. I've got a French toast 
turkey sandwich that just sings brunch. And then these on a brunch menu would be fantastic. So let's see if we can start flipping these and see what they're looking like. Ooh-wee. I just love these. And you know what, the kids would love these too because it's like a big tater tot. So for Robert, who wanted me to do salmon croquettes, I'm gonna tell you, take that salmon and mix it in with these potatoes and there's no telling how many people will be flying around to your house. You could probably smell that cooking a mile away. But come back with me after the break. We're gonna get everything laid out, looking very festive and easy to clean up. So come back with me in just a few minutes. Welcome back everybody and I am so excited about the way leftovers are gonna be presented during this holiday because we've all learned some tricks today and some ways to utilize leftovers to come up with some creative ideas during the holidays for things that might be clogging up the refrigerator and the freezer for that matter. So here we have everything that we've done and it's a little different this week for me. You know, usually I have all the kinds of presentation ideas at the end. We're gonna make this very easy and simple so while we were away, I finished frying the potato croquettes. They just browned up so nice. And you just take those and put them on a paper towel to drain. And they are nice and crisp and ready to go. They can be served just as they are or at room temperature. Now, we've got two different kinds of sandwiches and we've got the soup. So let's start with the sandwiches. Um, the French toast sandwich I put in the warming drawer. I just had it covered with some aluminum foil. And now I'm gonna lift that out. And it's just, I mean, even the smell of that cinnamon, I didn't even mention that really while we were preparing them, but the cinnamon was in the custard. That with the bacon and the arugula that's also kind of gotten a little bit steamed. Just look at that. And it's just such a moist sandwich. So I'm gonna present this, and I know my family is probably falling off the couch right now as I'm talking about using paper plates because that, that is not traditionally something that I use very much. So I am using paper plates because we're gonna keep it simple. You know, back in the day, and I've got some video rolling from when I was a child, we were so formal at every occasion, and maybe that's why I seem to do that myself, but if you'll notice, my dad has got on a velvet carving jacket in front of this turkey at the table, and everything is just presented like nobody's business. All right, so now I've got the other sandwich that was the turkey, the Havarti cheese, the mayonnaise, and we put a little bit of the fig preserves on top of this. So I'm using things that I canned over the summer, talking about that, and then I've just got all of that up under a moist paper towel so it stays nice and moist. And here again, just a beautiful sandwich, and that bread is nice and moist. All right, so let's move over to Bitsy Spankin' Vegetable Soup. And remember we talked about the really rich color of this soup and what it was going to look like. Oh my gosh. So nice paper bowls, everybody, because we were hand washing that china and silver earlier in the day. We're not gonna be doing that when we're serving leftovers. It's going to be so delicious, people won't know whether they're eating it on paper plates or china. So what a great way to celebrate the holiday right there. So if you have dessert left over, certainly now's the time to bring all that out. But if you don't, Fresh Market always has a variety of really handmade, homemade desserts. And so I picked up a pumpkin pie got it on my cake stand, but when I sliced it, I sliced some of the slices really thinly because some people just like just a little bit of bite. But if it's already sliced, it's just really easy to serve, works out really well that way. 
I had a shout out earlier to uh, Robert Thompson about the croquettes and I want to remind all of you that I love suggestions, love to hear your input whether it's through our website at veryvera.com or if you just give us a call at our office, that number is also located there. If you've got something that you want me to do on the show, I'd love to hear your feedback. I want to thank my sister for sharing her recipe for her vegetable soup. You know, this freezes well. It's always great to have on hand. And, you know, in terms of leftovers, we've all thought of ways today to not waste things, to have ways to enjoy it more than one time. I'm going to start with a little bite of this soup because it really brings back a lot of memories of my time with my sister. No matter what you do, do it in good taste and come back and join me next week for another episode of The Very Vera Show.